Hi, and welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Mary Evelyn, and this video is not sponsored. Okay, for this class, let's go over some of our supplies that we're gonna be using. Um, this is a pretty straightforward class, so I'm excited to show you everything. We've got, uh, first of all, we've got our Viviva color sheets here. These are gonna be what we're gonna use for our colors. These are great. I'm gonna walk you through all that during this class. I've got two separate water brushes. These are Derwent's. Um, I just added these in here because I'm just gonna show you a couple of things you can do with that. That really um, aids in the ability to go out without um, a bucket of water, extra brushes, all that. It's very transportable. I've got a number four round master's touch brush here. One of my favorites I like to use in my watercolor classes. I've got a piece of 300 pound watercolor paper. That is just so I do not have to tape it down to a board. You can use whatever weight paper you'd like, but I do enjoy cold press versus hot press or rough. I've got my outline. I've got a little bit of graphite paper here and a pen so that I can transfer this image onto my watercolor paper. I also have some paper towels up here and just an extra little palette I'm going to be using just to kind of dilute some of those pigments from the color sheets. And I've got some water set off to the side. So let's just jump right into this class. I'm going to go ahead and transfer this and then we will move on. Okay, we're gonna jump right on into this painting. We are gonna start with the wet on wet. We're gonna work on a deeper pigment towards the base of each leaf. We're gonna start with the leaves. So when it comes to this, it's repetition. We're just gonna do the same process over and over again. So I'm gonna get you started on it and then we'll speed it up and you can follow along just doing the same application with each leaf. We're gonna wait for that to dry. And then if we wanna add some shadows into that, we'll wait for it to dry and then proceed with our shadows. I do want to point out something with this little handy dandy color sheet piece here. Um, we've actually got a mixing tray in the back. They send you this little piece that you actually um, tape down. It comes with sticky tape on the back. Give you all a little look. I've already used this when I did my uh, first round of this painting. So what I wanted to show you though is you can just take a damp paper towel and wipe off the pigment. How cool is that? Like that's, I think that's very smart. Um, their goal really is to make this as transportable as possible. So you can just take it on the go, you can paint wherever you wanna paint, um, that sort of thing. So that flips out and then you can use your colors accordingly. And as you can see, I've already used this uh, once. So, and you can also put your colors down in the little areas here so that you know about the tone of them because on some of these colors they're a little bit um i don't know what you call it they're beautiful to look at but you're like oh man that's such a pretty green well it's actually violet so keep that in mind when you are painting so that's part of why those little colors are there now okay we are going to start with the leaves so let's just jump right in and we're going to start with our light green and our sap green okay and i will show you first a little bit about these water pins water brushes you can get um, this one i've already gone ahead and added a little bit of saturation i already got it going so that it's it's going to be wet coming out so you can just take that and you can go right into your color like so and then you could come over here and you could start to lay down your pigment just like that. Now this is a little bit of a thinner uh, water brush. So you can just kind of keep coming along and there's the more water that's gonna kind of keep coming through. You're gonna start with a darker pigment and it's gonna get lighter as it goes, which is pretty beneficial if you think about it, um, trying to go from dark to light. So then I could go in here and add in a little bit more. I think I'm remembering now why 
I don't use these that often. Um, when I'm using a normal brush, the pigment, I can, I can drop pigment down into the leaves first. This, this one tends to kind of almost suck the water back up into the brush. There's just, it's a, it's a very fine nuance. It's nothing, it's not a big deal. Um, let me try this other bigger brush here. And I just gently squeeze it until I have water coming out the end here. And then this one's a little better. It's not, not super great. I think I had color on that before. But be mindful of that going from color to color. These are very saturated colors, lots of pigment included in them. So please be mindful as you're painting. Okay, so we're gonna go between this sap green. I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of water going here and I come over here and kind of go, okay, that's, that's about where I want it. And then I can just come over here and keep adding in to the leaves and I just realized I missed a couple of little areas and that's okay it's not a big deal you can really make this your own um, particular style it, it's not a big deal um, we are gonna go between this light green and I think let's see the sap green how that's gonna lay down. I think I ended up mixing one of like the Viridian to get that really pretty green. And again, the idea is to be able to have everything all in one here. Yeah, that's exactly what I had done was I mixed some of the light green with the Viridian to get this kind of almost emerald green color. So we're just gonna go back over this. Okay, and part of having the tray is if I want to dilute, now this is a porcelain tray so that I can take as little or as much of that pigment as I want and lay it back down. This is really just about filling in these colors and I just realized I was technically showing you wet on dry because I went straight into these without getting the leaf wet first. Wet on wet is basically you're going to get the leaf wet and then you're going to drop your pigments down onto that. So I just realized, okay, kind of get these colors going again, that really pretty vibrant green. Okay, so this one can show you. I've got, again, you've got lots of pigment in your brush um, and it's kind of on that cooler green now. So you can come in here, get that inside petal wet, and then make a note that if you have a pigment on there already, it's probably gonna, once you get the wet on wet, it's gonna shift into it. So be mindful of that. I'm gonna mix some of the sap green and some of that viridian and see what we got going on here. Not bad, it's pretty actually. So I'm just gonna take some of that and drop it down here at the very bottom and just kind of sweep it up. And then I believe I may have taken some slate gray into this as well, but it's kind of just a matter of playing with the colors till you get what you like. So then I'm gonna come on the back of this leaf here. Since this is where the highlight goes, we'll wait to put that down. And then you're basically gonna let that dry and then we can go over that highlight with some yellow and then deepen the base with some of that slate black. Let me go ahead and deepen this over here just a little bit. Now this is, this is more of a true wet on wet. This is still damp, so I've got this deeper pigment and I can just kind of brush it on there. And 
and it will deepen that tone a bit. Okay, again, just kind of get some of that sap green and some of the viridian. You can play, I'm sure you can mix some of the uh, magenta with some of these as well. Create, see now we've got a really nice deep pigment here. And this may be drying now, let's see. And just kind of mix that in there so that it it fades into the leaf. And if you want to get a little creative, I know these paints, they're super pigmented, but you might be able to add little water drops where you drop a little piece of water on there and it'll kind of push the pigment out of the way. Okay. And we're going to do a true wet on wet over here and I'll show you that and then we'll just speed up through the rest of the leaves because it's the same thing over and over and over again. I'm gonna add a little bit of that light green just so I can see where my water is going. This is my favorite part. This is riveting stuff, painting water onto paper. Okay, so that is a nice mess. I'm gonna show you the sheen here. See if we can get that to show. There we go. There it is. Okay. And you can see the, the water's pooling up a little bit as it as I tip it. Um, it's probably a little bit too much water, so I'm gonna just dry my brush off a little bit and pick up some of the water. It's a good little trick if you need to bring up some of that moisture off of the paper. Okay, I'm gonna come in with that light green first. You can get really creative with these pigments. They're really fun. They've got, I mean, like I said, they're just so vibrant. Okay, I'll come over here and get some of my mixture and just add it to the base here. Okay, you're basically just going to continue repeating that process to finish all the leaves and then we're going to work on our flowers. Okay, some of these leaves are still damp, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump into a little bit of that slate black. 
and show you what we can do with that. And some of these leaves, we can really get a nice depth. Like down in here. Kind of up and around the edge of that leaf there. And you can clean off your brush a little bit. And let's see if this will work. I think you should be able to kind of pull that pigment out just a little bit. You don't want to go too far. You're going to lose your that really bright green. But you can kind of just go over it so it, it has that nice faded look to it. Again, you can kind of just take a damp brush. And really you can be just about as creative as you want on these particular leaves. They don't have to look like mine at all. Just kind of showing you my process and then you might can take something from that and make it your own. Which is the really cool part about art. Taking things and making them your own. And you can always take a paper towel as well. If you feel like you got an area too dark or something, you can take a little paper towel and kind of dab at the area. Should be able to recover it just a little bit. These are fairly staining pigments, so um, doing any kind of scrubbing, anything like that is a little bit uh, harder to do. Not impossible, just harder. And see that one's still damp so I can kind of drop in the pigment there. That one's already dried. Same thing here, I can drop, drop, drop. Again, just kind of taking that brush, going over it. I'm gonna make a little bit of a line here, like the way that looked. All right, we're really getting that that depth we want here. So we're just gonna kind of continue on and you finish up your leaves as you like. Okay, so we've got that part done and drying. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off a little palette here. <laughs> Be loud and annoying. Okay. And I think the next step I need to take is to go ahead and do the shading of the cup before we add all these magentas in here. Otherwise, they'll probably bleed over. So we want to make sure that we've got all of our highlighting done. And we will do that with this slate black. And you could mix a little bit of a tone with this slate black just to create, um, if you wanted a, like a blue tone, you could add a little bit of the vi or the Parisian blue you could add to that to create a kind of a more of a base. Like I said, this stuff is so, so pigmented. So just a little bit goes a long way. 
And again, you can really make it whatever tone you want. You can add a little magenta in there if you wanted it a little more purple. You can add some of the brown. Just kind of have fun with it. Okay. I'm gonna scoot this over just a little bit because I want my hand to anchor here just so I have a nice steady motion when I'm going to do the line work here. We are gonna go over this with a little bit of that uh, orangey brown color, a little bit of the yellow, I think it's the yellow. You can kind of fan this out just a little bit if you get a damp brush and kind of turn the brush a little bit on its side. You can get a little bit of a easier time. Like I said, kind of straightening out. Well, I say straighten out. It's, if you think about it, it's a curve, so you're not really straightening out, but smoothing out the edges here and here. Okay, I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that and go here along the edge. Go ahead and fill in this little area here. Okay, I'm just gonna try to feather the tone out a little bit and I'm gonna kind of take it to where I've left some brighter streaks so you get kind of like a reflection or the idea that it's a curved object really you can always go back and deepen that as well but we're just gonna kind of finish up around here Okay, and then you just feather out those edges as you go around. This pigment is pretty easily um, manipulated as far as the lighter tones, the darker ones are a little harder to move. And then we can jump in and do our middle. As long as your rim is not super saturated, you can jump into this part. Okay, I think I went between the dusk orange and the burnt Umber. Let's try the burnt umber first. Let's see how that looks around the edges because we want our darkest pigment around the edge of the cup here. And again, just if you need to move that out of the way, just move it over so you can get a nice anchor on that curve with your hand. Okay, and then you can take a damp brush and you can kind of pull that pigment out. Okay, I'm gonna turn this a little bit and we're gonna keep going around. Okay, now we can jump into our bright orange. Let's see, let's use that dusk orange and let's see where that Oh, that was bright. It's almost a little too bright, but let's let's add a little around the edge here. Yeah, that's gonna be a little too yellow. So let's jump over to our burnt sienna and the about yellow ochre. Okay, that should work a little better. Oh yeah, there we go. color I had going on almost reminds me of the red lattes that I get. I actually prefer a rooibos tea over coffee nowadays. I still love coffee, but I just like the way rooibos tastes. Okay, again, just kind of bringing in 
some clean water onto this just to kind of bring the focus into the middle. Okay, I do not do latte art. I've tried it once, I failed horribly at it. Not that I couldn't practice and get better, but no critiquing the latte art. I know it's a little crazy. You can spend as little time on this or as much as you want. I just wanted to kind of show you my approach. You can leave a little more white in there. I think I went a little overboard with the orange, but the idea is generally the same. We are going to jump into our flowers. I'm going to show you how to do, um, we're basically going to do this one and then I will just, we'll speed through these other ones, but I'm going to show you how to lay down the colors for this little guy. Okay, just getting some colors prepped. So I have to jump back and forth. I want some deep, some deep tones as well as some of the lighter tones. So that's kind of what I'm working with here. Okay, we're gonna start with, really these are gonna be pretty much wet on wet. So you can start with this inside. Again, I did rinse my brush off, but this is just, this is where we're at. So you just fill in a petal, grab some of your deeper tone, go to the base, and just tap, tap, tap. And if you want to add a little bit of a lighter tone, and really these flowers can be whatever color you want. They do not have to be this color. And then if you want to kind of go in with the dark, just to kind of give yourself a little guide, that works too. Sometimes you need to kind of mark off where these petals are at. So I'm going to jump over and go to this bigger side here. And I'm just going to let the pigment set in there in that little area. And then I'm going to go back in and drop some of the black color. Again, the idea is just kind of the base of the, each petal. We're kind of just going to run a little bit of that deep shade over. And if you want to take a color on the outside edges, you can. There's no do's or don'ts here. Drop a little bit of the black. It does spread pretty quickly, so you want to be mindful of that. Always take a brush and kind of pull back your pigments. And then we're going to jump over to this middle one. It's kind of a half wet on wet, wet on dry. Thing I just did here. I wanted to see what I was doing. Grab some more of that magenta. And then jump over here. Be mindful of your borders because that green can easily come into this side. And I'll go ahead and fill in this little area here since it's not touching. You're just kind of jumping over from thing to thing. It's kind of the idea. Okay. 
tap your brush off on the paper towel and kind of pull some of those tones up. You can add a little touch of that yellow back in there if you want. You don't have to. Tap, tap, tap that deep, deep black. Add a little bit more of the black over here. Kind of pull those out. Okay. I think this is dry enough. We're going to go ahead and jump into this middle area. Grab some of that deep. Magenta. Now this is a fun part where we're going to like try to make sure our line is semi straight around that cup there and then create the idea that there's depth. So we would need that, that black tone, a little bit of that orangey color, Add some pink back in there. Just have fun. Play with the colors. Again, the idea is deep base to a lighter color when it comes to painting the petals. You can go in and add as much detail as you want to these does not have to be doesn't have to be super not finished the idea is to think in terms of the shadows of where the petals are on top of each well, where the petals are on top of each other, basically, and then you're just gonna create a shadow underneath that. Is really all this comes down to. And some of these you can just kind of fill in as you want. That's pretty much how we go about it. You can let it dry and add more depth with the black, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these other two flowers and we're just gonna let it roll. Okay, so as we are going through this time lapse, I'm just gonna remind y'all in my Skillshare classes, it's a full class, uh, usually from like an hour, hour and a half or so, and we're just, I'll walk you through all the steps. So here is just kind of a sped up version, but I wanted to introduce y'all to a little bit of my teaching approach and how I would do things now using the Viviva color sheets. It's a little different than when I would have a typical palette, but very similar. And I am hoping after using the Metallics by Viviva, those are amazing. I used them for my solo show that we just got uh, April 1st. And so I will be planning to do a class to show y'all a little bit of that process because it was just so fun. So thank you Viviva for your metallic watercolor sheets. Those were fantastic. And be sure to like and subscribe if you found this information useful. I'm planning to do more here on YouTube as my channel grows, so I do appreciate any and all support in that manner, and that will keep me going. So, I hope you enjoyed everything, and y'all have a great rest of your day. Until next time, happy painting!